In this video, I want to show you the top five DAX functions that you need to learn and master to extend your DAX skills to the next level. We're going to go through them one by one with some examples. And I'm also going to include a download file at the description box below so that you can follow along as well if you want. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where I focus on teaching beginners the wonderful world that is Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. If you've just started your Power BI journey, you can probably get away with not dealing with DAX at all, especially if you only need to do some simple calculations. But eventually, you'll hit some limitations with what type of calculations you can do. And by learning DAX, even just the basics will let you overcome these. So today we're going to look at my top five DAX functions that you should learn and master as a beginner. These are my top five functions because I use them on a daily basis. They're very simple, but very effective. The first function is count. This enables you to count the number of cells within a column. So here we have a very simple Power BI report that just has one table orders. So let's say we want to count the number of orders within this table itself. So what we need to do is we can create a new measure here. We'll name this one count of orders and then we'll just type count so it asks for a column name so in this case we will just give it the order id let's put this in a card and that gives you the count of orders that we have in this table 29 orders so one thing to bear in mind when using count is that it doesn't count any blank values that you have in your column so it will get skipped so for example here we have some products the product names and we have this one value here that is empty you can see here it's blank and if we try to give the count another column let's let's give it product name instead of order id you'll see your count is 28 instead of 29 because it excludes that blank uh, column or cell so just bear that in mind when using count in a separate video i covered the different variances of count like count x or count a along with some differences so if you're interested in that check out that video so we're moving on to my next dax function which is sum which is pretty self-explanatory just sums up the columns that you give it so let's have a look at the report here again and we have a column here quantity and let's say we want to sum up the quantity value in order to get to get the total quantity for our orders so let's create a new measure and let's name this one total quantity and here we will write sum and we'll give it the quantity column and we'll do the same thing as we did before we'll bring the measure here and we will put it in the card so now it gives you the sum of that column quantity to get the total quantity uh, as a total here in a measure but from here let's go one step further let's say we want to calculate the total sales by multiplying the quantity by the unit price so how are we going to do that with this measure well we can go back to that measure here and simply use the multiplication here, the asterisk. And then let's do another sum here to sum the unit price instead. And just to make it more clear, we will rename this to total sales. And to recap, it's doing, it's summing the total quantity and the total unit price in order to get the total sales for this orders table. So if I hit enter here, you see that it gives us the total sales, which is the breakdown of all the quantities with in your orders table. And if you want to see them individually, we can even put that here in our table here, which gives you the total sales for those individual orders, which is, uh, and you can kind of validate here by checking the quantity and the unit price. So just bear in mind when using the sum function is you need to make sure that the column that you give it is a number type column. You'll know that the column is a number type column if it has this symbol right next to it in the field section. Uh, otherwise it will not give you anything, it will just fail. The same thing with the count function. I have a separate video that covers extensively the different capabilities of the sum function as well as the other variations of it. So check out that video if you haven't yet. The next function is divide, which lets you divide two values together. So here in our orders table, we have a couple of columns that we can use for our division. Now, this time let's create a new column instead. So let's uh, right click here and new column. And let's name this one division. And 
Let's try to divide, first of all, the quantity against the unit price, just as an example. So quantity divided by unit price. Now, as a beginner, you might be tempted to use the slash instead of the divide function in order to divide two values together. But I'll show you in a second why you shouldn't do that. So for now, let's hit enter and let's bring this division column here into our table so we can see it side by side. So you can see that the values are here and we are getting results here, which is not a problem. This is exactly what we wanted. But now let's say we want to do the opposite way around. So, okay, let's do unit price divided by quantity and normally this won't be a problem but if I hit enter now you will see that your division is returning infinity because you can't divide zero to a number value and just using the slash doesn't make sure that this kind of error is handled properly. So this is why we should be using the divide function instead of just the slash. So in order to fix this issue all we need to do is uh, use the divide function and here we just want to add the two numbers, so the quantity and the unit price. And here we can add another parameter, which is alternative results. It's optional, you can leave this blank, uh, but it lets you decide what you want there instead of infinity. So, but we'll leave it empty for now. So we'll keep that empty when there is uh, an error with our division. If hit enter, you'll see that that is fixed uh, here in our division column. The next function is the if and switch function. These functions lets you add a logical expression and lets you control the result, either it's true or false. And I typically use this when I want to group certain values together. So let's say in our orders table, we want to group our orders based on the quantity. So small orders are orders with quantity of less than or equals to two, uh, medium is five, and large is nine and above. So we're gonna create a new column here, and we will name this uh, grouping. And we'll create an if statement here. So here is the expression where we can write, uh, let's say, um, if the quantity is less than or equals to two, we want this to be small. And if it's false, well, let's show this one for now. And let's add the grouping column here. So you can see that now if it's small, it uh, adds that mm, small to that column. Now let's complete this function to categorize our large and medium orders. So we're gonna go back here and we're gonna add an if statement. We're gonna write the we're gonna we're gonna write what it should be if it's false. In this part of the expression, we want to uh, add another if statement to make sure that we can check as well if uh, an order has uh, less than or equals to five, or if it's more than or more than nine orders. And what we're gonna do is gonna create a nested if statement. So it's an if statement within an if statement. So we're gonna add if again, and we're gonna add the logical test here. If the quantity is less than or equals to five, we'll name the, we'll make this medium, otherwise it's large. So here we go. If you have more categories in your grouping, it's better to use the switch statement instead. It's a lot easier to read. And I wanna show you how it looks like. So I'm gonna write the switch statement here. And for the expression, we're gonna write true. With the switch statement, you can add as many values and results as you want without having to create nested if statements like before. So here, let's say if the quantity is less than or equals to two, we'll make it small. If the quantity, so we'll type medium. And if the quantity is less than or equals to nine, make it large and then if it doesn't fit our grouping we'll just name it out of scope so it's a lot easier to read uh, and it does the exact same thing as the if statement before right and it can support um, many categories in your grouping. The last function that I wanna to cover today is the calculate function, which is arguably the most important DAX function that you should learn, simply because of how simple and effective it is to use. So in a brief summary, the calculate function needs two things. It needs the expression that you want to evaluate and the filter function that you want to evaluate this expression by. So let's have a look at our total sales here. And in our total sales, we're getting the total sales for all the orders in our order 
orders table. But let's say we want to add a filter context to these total sales. In order to just sum up the total number of sales for the group of large orders. And we can do just that with the calculate function. So let's create a new measure here just to show you. Let's say total sales for large orders. And we're gonna create the calculate function here. You see it asks for two things, the expression and the filter. So the first thing that we wanna add is the sum of sales. And actually we don't need to do that because we can reuse one of our measures already, total sales. And the next thing we wanna add the filter context. So we wanna use the grouping that we've just created. And we wanna say if the grouping is large, we wanna sum up that value. We hit enter here and let's put this measure in a card. You'll see that it just sums up the values for the large orders. And we can check if that's correct by going to the total sales here and adding an implicit filter function here, filter context, to filter this to just sum up the values based on just the large orders. And you'll see it's exactly the same as what it's been done in the calculate function that we've created right here. And what's great about the calculate function is that you can add as many filter contexts as you want, which makes it really flexible and easy to use. And that's it. So those were my top five DAX functions that I think everyone should learn and master. Did I miss any essential functions that everyone should learn? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really enjoyed this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.